Hello. OK, so next talk is by uh, Sandyam Gaga and Amit Sahai. It's called Adaptively Secure Multi-Party Computation with Dishonest Majority. And the talk will be given by Sandyam. Uh, thanks for the introduction. So as uh, Ivan mentioned, I'm going to talk about Adaptively Secure Multi-Party Computation with Dishonest Majority. This is joint work with Amit Sahai from UCLA. OK, so let me start by uh, giving the basic outline of what uh, multi-party computation is. So multi-party computation allows a set of mutually distrustful parties to compute a function uh, on, on their private inputs. This notion was introduced by, by Yao in the setting of two parties and then extended to uh, multi-party by GMW. We're going to consider the setting of adaptive adversaries, where the, the adversary has the ability to corrupt parties on the fly. So it can look at what is happening in the protocol, and based on what it has seen, it can uh, choose to corrupt parties. And, and, and the subsequent parties are corrupted based on its uh, views so far. So it learns something from the, the, the view of the parties corrupt so far, and subsequently corrupts future parties. So this notion was uh, introduced and formalized by CFCN in 96, and uh, it's been uh, very interesting and has, multi uh, has, has had a lot of implications in different areas in cryptography. So let me define things more formally. So in multi-party computation, security is defined by comparing a real-world execution of the protocol with an ideal-world scenario. So in the real world, we require that for every real-world adversary that corrupts uh, ad parties adaptively, the parties of his choice, uh, there exists an ideal-world adversary that corrupts the same party. And, and, and in such a way that the, uh, for every real adversary, the, the ideal-world adversary essentially achieves the same effect. What I mean by that is that the outputs generated by all the parties in the, the real world is the distribution of the outputs generated by the parties in the real world is indistinguishable from the uh, distribution of the outputs, the parties in the ideal world. So more formally, no probabilistic polytime distinguisher can tell, where, uh, differentiate between the, the input-output distri input output distribution of the honest parties and the adversary in the ideal world from uh, the one in the real world, except with negligible polytime. OK, so before going into to details, I want to give a motivating example. Uh, this was in, in CFT in itself. So consider a setting that we have one dealer who holds some secret SK, okay? and there are n parties. What we're going to require is that this dealer secret shares his uh, secret key SK among some random root n chosen party. So what he does is he chooses root n random uh, strings such that they all XOR to the secret value SK, and he distributes these chosen values among the root n parties, which are also chosen randomly among the set of all parties. And, and he, he distributes these shares to these parties, and he publishes the set of parties who get these shares. Now, consider an adversary that corrupts, let's say, order n, so roughly n by two of the parties, let's say. Then if you have a non-adaptive adversary or a static adversary that gets to corrupt all parties before anything happens, then we can see that uh, it's, it's, it's highly unlikely that it will be able to hit all the root in parties which actually get the shares and hence will be unable to reconstruct the secret. On the other hand, an adapter adversary, it can just corrupt the, the root in parties which actually have the shares and use that to uh, uh, get the secret out. Okay, so what are the previous results? Uh, the, as I already mentioned, this notion was introduced by CFCN and they got uh, an adaptively secure MPC protocol with, in the stand standalone setting with honest majority. And, and there's been a lot of work trying to improve it and, and do things without assuming this. So the first results were for the setting of zero knowledge and OT by Beaver, which were later extended to the two-party setting, like general two-party computation using by Beaver and Katz and Dostrowski. And the first result, which got uh, some form of adaptively secure multi-party computation without assuming uh, honest majority, by CLOS, and, uh, but they got it in the common random string model. Uh, in this work, they got uh, a security under a stronger notion of, uh, under a stronger notion called the UC security, but my focus is going to be uh, in the, uh, the, the standalone setting, so, so no composition in that sense. So the question we ask is, can we do it after secure MPC without honest majority and without assuming any trusted setup like common random string? So uh, let me start with a very simple approach and, and see what goes wrong. So let's say you had this trusted party that, did, uh, that was willing to do ideal commitments for you. So there is a guy in the sky who, who is okay with doing uh, ideal commitments for you. 
And this was given uh, in, 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 for example, you can get it from CLOS. And, and, and now you can ask the question, well, uh, we have this, uh, given this trusted party, we, well, we can do everything, okay, as in CLS. Can we securely realize this trusted party? And the answer to that is also yes, so you can do that. Can we compose this? So, so we have a trusted party that's willing to do, if it was willing to do commitments, then you can do everything. We also have a protocol that securely realizes this commitment. Can we put things together and, and get protocol directly? Well, we do have a composition theorem in, uh, by, by Kennedy, which allows us to do it. Uh, but surprisingly, a direct application of these results doesn't follow, and, and, and it fails. I want to stress here that with the correct formalization, all the results are correct, and still the, uh, uh, the composition doesn't go through. And this was because a subtle issue that was overlooked, and, and, and you know, it was kind of thought of as obvious. So let's see why. So this is like the punchline uh, 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 that I want to convey. So if you have a two-party protocol that is adaptively secure, you know, you, you, you pick your favorite two-party adaptively secure protocol, and you want to execute in a setting where there are multiple other parties present in the system. So there are other, so if I have a protocol that, 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 that was secure, but now I want to execute in a setting where there are other parties in the system who don't even talk. They don't talk, but they have secret input. So they have some secret state, but they don't talk. Then this protocol that you started with, which was adaptively secure, will fail to be adaptively secure in the, 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 the setting where you have other parties present in the system. So to see why, so let's uh, you know, look at your favorite two-party protocol, uh, which has a black box simulator. Okay. So now uh, it, at some point, is going to rely on rewinding. We are not in the trusted setup world, so it has to, to, to do rewinding at some point. And, and, and since we are in this end-party setting, the adversary now has the ability to corrupt these quiet parties. They do have secret states, so it does learn something when it corrupts them. And, and when it does corrupt them, it learns something in this process. And this case was never handled in the, the proof for the uh, two-party case. And, 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 and as we'll see, this is not like a, just a small issue that was missed in the proof. It's a, it's a fundamental problem, and, and as we'll see, there's an impossibility result that you cannot argue security of such protocol. Okay, so to, to summarize my results, so the first result that we have is that you cannot construct a, uh, an adaptively secure protocol that is round efficient. So in particular, every little of n by, for an n-party functionality, you cannot uh, have an adaptively secure protocol that, 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 that has little of n by log n rounds with black box simulation. So this result holds even if erasures are allowed, except if, uh, uh, we require that there are no erasure on the inputs uh, of parties. So you cannot erase your input, but you can erase anything else. And, and these results are not for the setting of super polynomial simulation, if you know, it's just the most basic setting. Uh, there's a positive feasibility result, which is round inefficient. Uh, there are round efficient protocols with black box simulation, but uh, uh, non-black box uh, techniques are inherently inefficient, so the, the, the protocol is efficient, but inefficient but the round efficiency is better, so you, you, you stop there. And the round, uh, the, the efficiency here is as good as the, the semi-on setting. So in particular, that means if you're willing to assume that uh, at least one party remains honest, or if you're uh, willing to assume uh, that honest parties can erase, then you can get constant rounds, but if you don't want to assume any of those assumptions, then you, you can do something in, uh, which is linear in the depth of the circuit being evaluated. So the long story short, the, the key point is that you can do as good as you could do in the semi honest setting. Okay, so I wanna give a, 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 some intuition behind uh, the impossibility result. And, and the, the point is that I will demonstrate actual real world adversity in the setting uh, which I said. So we we'll have two parties which are actually talk and there are a bunch of other parties which never talk, and, but they do have secret state. So the, par the first party has, uh, let's say secret state X1, the second has, or the input x1, and the second has input x2, and, and so on. All parties have these inputs. Only the, these two parties will ever speak in the conversation, but I'll demonstrate a, a, an adversary, a real life adversary, for which you cannot construct a simulator. And, and this adversary has the, the, the secret state, uh, it, it obtains a secret state as, let's say, some auxiliary input in, in some, some way. Okay, so let's consider the real world execution. So what happens is, uh, I'm going to have this adversary that after each, after receiving each message, just corrupts some super lo uh, logarithmic number of parties among the quiet parties. 
So how, what happens is, let's say without loss of generality, the first party sends the first message, then you know, our, our, our adversary uh, decides to corrupt some uh, super omega log n by two parties. Uh, uh, so let's say the, it, it decides to corrupt the party four, party six, and party x and minus one. At this point, the input or the secret state of these parties is going to be handed over to the adversary. It checks whether the values that has been handed over are consistent with what it obtained as its auxiliary information. And if they're not, then it aborts. Otherwise, it just continues and, and behaves honestly and sends the message. So it does this after each step. So after, the, after it receives the second message from the first party, it again corrupts some uh, omega log n by two parties and obtains their, their secret state and so on. So this, this happens after each step. So it, it's not hard to see it, because we have like a little of n by log n rounds and there are uh, omega log n by two parties have been corrupted. So if you set the parameters appropriately, you can get that at most n by two parties are ever going to be corrupted in this execution. Okay. So now I have described this adversary. Uh, this is a real world attack. I'm not going to demonstrate that you cannot construct a simulator for this adversary, a black box simulator for this adversary. So let's see how. So what's going to happen in the ideal world? We have the simulator. He talks to the ideal functionality. And, and on the other hand, it talks to this real world adversary that I just described. So it sends the, the first message to the, to the adversary. Adversary at this point is going to, you know, just like in the real world, corrupt some super logarithmic number of parties. So again, let's say x4, and at this point it's handed over those values. It checks whether uh, everything is consistent and goes on. And you know, this, this, this process is repeated just like the real world. So what happens if there, you know, our, our simulator tries to rewind something? So recall that I mentioned that if you have a black box simulator, it has to rewind at some point. So if it does try to rewind, and what it's going to do is it's going to at some point change the message that it sent in this the main. I'm going to call this the main execution. It changes what the message it sent in the main execution by something else. Now our our, our adversary, consistent with its 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 behavior, is again going to corrupt some omega log n by two parties. So when it corrupts these parties, uh, uh, let's say this party five is uh, you know, one of these parties which was never corrupted in, in, in the main execution. So recall that at most n by two parties were in total getting corrupted here. And I'm corrupting uh, uh, omega log n by two parties when, when, when a rewind happens. So if these parties which are being corrupted at this point are randomly chosen, then there's going to be at least one party among the n by two so there are n by two parties that are already like that, that get corrupted in the main execution. They're going to be n by two parties which are not corrupted, and, and this guy is going to corrupt at least one of them. So what that means is that our simulator has to provide the internal state or the input of this party that was never corrupted in the the, the actual execution or the main execution uh, when the rewind happens, and uh, our simulator is stuck, so it cannot rewind at this point. So what this means is that the simulator cannot rewind at any point. And, and that allows us to conclude that you cannot have a, a black box simulation uh, in this setting. So what I just argued is that you cannot have a black box simulator uh, for a round efficient uh, a, a adoptively secure MPC protocol. Okay. So you can circumvent this problem by having very large rounds. So think of a protocol that has more than uh, n rounds. Now, just by pigeonhole principle, you have n parties. There's going to be at least one round where no party is corrupted. So either all parties are corrupted before this point, or there is no party that's corrupted in, this, uh, in a specific round. So at that point, our simulator can focus all efforts and, and try to, to get uh, uh, an absolutely secure uh, MPC. So the point, uh, uh, a crucial point is that uh, you, there exists this place where he can actually rewind. So I'm not going to go into details of how this happens, and, uh, uh, but you know you can look at the paper for that. So, so there are other issues of non-malleability here, but again, uh, it can be handled using known techniques. Uh, I'm going to talk a little, just uh, one slide about how you can uh, get uh, a constant round protocol using non-black box simulation, and I'm, I'm going to leave the details for the, the for you to look at this paper. So the starting point is we cannot rewind the adversary. And, and, and so the only alternative in some sense is to have uh, a simulator that does not rewind and has a straight line simulation strategy. So you know, the only kind of uh, uh, technique that we have at hand is the, the non-black box simulation technique of Barak. 
And, and, and the, the problem with Barak's protocol, it's not adoptively secure. So how do we get it to work? Well, we can look at the papers on that. So uh, finally, to conclude, the uh, CFGN constructed uh, the first adoptively secure MPC protocol in the setting of honest majority. They left open the question of, of uh, doing uh, it in, in the setting where you don't have honest majority, and, 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 and we resolved this question and, 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 and uh, proved that actually non-black box simulation technique is is essential for, for, for receiving this risk. 